Hello, this is a short little video about the macroeconomics of the coronavirus pandemic shown in the Arid Supply, Arid Demand model. The coronavirus has you know, basically hit the economy with a double shock and you know, the economy has gone into a deep, deep recession. Uh, there's a big debate about how long and deep and the lasting effects of this. Um, part of the idea with using an economic model like the Arid Supply Demand model is to explain what's happening to the economy and to look at the way policy can hopefully minimize the damage being done to the economy. Um, so in this short little video I'll describe how the Arid Supply Aggregate Demand model um, explains the coronavirus economic downturn and sort of the goals of policy as well as you know the good outcome that this policy could create but also the bad outcome that we are trying to avoid as a country. Now the art supply art demand model is a relatively simple model that divides the economy into two parts. There's the aggregate supply part of the economy which represents the productive side of the economy. All the parts of the economy that are out there producing finished goods that um, are out there for um, other parts of the economy to utilize. Those other parts of the economy are represented by the demand side of the economy. These, these are the parts of the economy that utilize the goods produced in the economy. Now the Arid Supply Arid Demand model is a useful model because it basically shows the three big macroeconomic indicators that economists look at. The level of economic output, GDP, the amount of unemployment, and also the level of inflation. Now, the layout for the art supply, art demand model, again, is relatively simple. On the vertical axis, there is the measure of inflation. On the horizontal axis, there is the level of government output. And right in the upward sloping blue line is the aggregate supply curve, representing the productive part of the economy. Really, you could think of it, this as the labor force and the capital that's used in production. And you also have the red downward sloping aggregate demand curve representing the consumption investment and government um, in the economy, right? The consumption done by consumers, the investment done by businesses, and um, the action of the government, the resources the government is taking for its own uh, policy purposes. Now, in this economy, right, the way that economists look at this is that the intersection of aggregate supply and aggregate demand basically gives us you know, the level of economic activity in the economy, really the real output in the economy. And economists use the term equilibrium to describe this point. The idea is that this is the point, this is the level of output where the amount produced in the economy is equal to the amount that is demanded by the various sectors in the economy. Another component of this model that's useful uh, for understanding the analysis that I'm about to do is the idea of potential output. This sort of vertical line here, potential GDP, is the full employment level of output. When the labor force is being utilized to the fullest, um, this is the amount of uh, output that you could expect to have in the economy. So it's often referred to as the full employment level um, output. Now, in this model, the potential output is really sort of the gravitational center of the economy. When the economy is knocked off balance, this is where it will usually trend back to. And that's going to be an important part of the analysis I'll be talking about here with what's going on in the economy right now. So if we put all the parts of the macroeconomic model together, potential output, aggregate supply, aggregate demand, um, we get a situation that economists refer to as general equilibrium, right? Arid supply and arid demand, real output, is also corresponding with what is the potential output for the economy. Again, this is sort of the place, the gravitational center of the economy. This is what the economy wants to trend back to when it absorbs some kind of shock. You know, historically, if there's some sort of arid demand uh, shock or some kind of arid supply shock, it will knock the economy off balance, but the economy will trend back to where it is at its level of potential output. So keeping that in mind, let's look at the double shock that has happened with the coronavirus pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic is kind of a uniquely 
you know, example of a double shock to the economy where it affected aggregate supply and aggregate demand really simultaneously and for much the same reason. Um, First of all, it was a supply shock because large parts of the labor force were no longer allowed to go to work. Large parts of the country have been given uh, stay-at-home orders. Unless you're an essential worker, you're basically working from home if you can work at all. Large numbers of, I mean, and by large numbers, I mean tens of millions of people have been uh, laid off or made unemployed. That is a huge drop in the labor force. What the economy is producing today is much less than what was producing a month ago. And this has been an abrupt shock. At the same time, consumption has also collapsed, in part because people can't buy as much as they used to because businesses are closed, and an awful lot of people have curtailed their consumption because of a decline in income. In addition, businesses have cut back on investment. So both arid supply and arid demand have gone inwards. And the result is that we are in a recession, probably quite a deep recession. And you know, basically the inward movement of the arid supply curve and the inward movement of the arid demand curve has created a level of real economic output that is beneath, uh, beneath potential output. This has opened up this recessionary gap in the economy. Now, Normally, when the economy goes into some kind of recessionary gap, uh, there's a number of you know, natural actions that the economy can do to try to recover from it. However, we're stuck in kind of a unique circumstance where because so many people are home and because so many businesses have been closed down, the reality is the economy cannot adjust out of it. We're kind of stuck in this state. And that, you could argue, is a good thing. Um, in that it's allowing us to deal with the public health emergency. But the process is we've essentially put the economy into a coma. Um, it's basically like a medically induced coma that it's being working at a much lower level in order for its own good in the long run. And this um, creates a problem in that lots of people are now running without income and there's the problem that uh, businesses also without income might start to go bankrupt. So one of the big problems right now is how long can the economy last in this current situation? And this is where government policy has come in. Um, the purpose of government policy has really been uh, twofold. Uh, to help both aggregate supply and aggregate demand. One of the things the government has done is both uh, the Federal Reserve and uh, through the Treasury Department is make loans to businesses. The Federal Reserve has expanded credit facilities to businesses. Um, the Treasury Department has its loan program to businesses. And the purpose of both of these activities is really to support aggregate supply. It's allowed government, uh, allowed businesses hopefully to maintain their organization, maintain their structure. Uh, one of the big fears is that businesses go bankrupt, that we could lose potential. And I'll get to talking about more of that in just a minute. The government has also expanded unemployment benefits tremendously, which has had the goal of hopefully supporting aggregate demand. Hopefully, uh, you know, workers who are unemployed, who are no longer getting income, will still be able to maintain consumption spending and in being able to maintain their consumption spending um, be able to keep other businesses that are still functioning going through the time being. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to do things like pay rent and so we won't have an awful lot of you know, collateral extended damage uh, from this downturn. Now the real fear and sort of the bad outcome that, we're, that economists and policymakers are trying to prevent is having a collapse in potential GDP, having a collapse in basically the ability of the economy to actually produce things. How would we see this happen? Well, if a lot of businesses ended up going bankrupt, those business organizations would have a hard time reforming after the economy comes out of this pandemic. And you would see lots and lots of workers who, while they're laid off now, they will not have the ability to return to those jobs which they were laid off from 
And this could really you know, hamper or slow down the ability of the economy to recover. The real fear is that if potential output declines, then the economy could actually you know, settle into a new lower level of general equilibrium. That the economy in essence could become stuck um, at a lower level of output and not really have the ability to push itself back outwards to where we formerly were. This is what economists are talking about when they start to talk about this downturn becoming a depression. The idea is that it becomes so long and you know, so pronounced um, and so destructive to business organizations that the economy basically settles into a long run level of lower output. And that lower level of output um, could take years to uh, move our way out of. The good outcome that policy is hoping for, and this is sort of the idea of trying to keep business organizations together during this time period to allow workers to, even if they've lost their jobs, to maintain their consumption, to pay their rent, and do other things, is that when, the econ when this pandemic passes, that businesses will be still organized, they can reopen quickly, they can rehire the workers that they have laid off, and that will push aggregate supply back out. And at the same time, uh, consumers will feel confident that they'll be able to go off and start spending money again. Uh, businesses will see a large uptick and that they'll uh, start investing again. And the economy will very quickly snap back out to where it was before in terms of potential uh, output. So, you know, the real test of where we're at right now in the economy is the ability of government policy to support businesses and help them maintain their business organization so that we don't see a collapse in potential output and also to help our workers you know get through this difficult time and being able to still maintain you know the the spending that they need to do on food on rent and other things that um, will help them survive this outcome or survive this pandemic